Hello and welcome. This is Dr. Jerry Cuomo. I'm here in my Boca Raton office on a Saturday uh, early afternoon uh, to go over Frank's case, which is a multiple implant case. We've um, gone over this case in a prior video and I wanted to re uh, review his, his history. Um, patient's been wearing an upper partial denture for many years and uh, lost, prematurely lost the uh, tooth number six, the cuspid. Uh, he lost a lot of buccal bone and the surgeon placed a 6.0 Nobel BioCare um, implant in that area. Um, after he had his sinus uh, surgery and sinus grafts, the surgeon then placed uh, a series of Nobel implants. These are Nobel Selects on the um, maxillary right and left side. So there's seven implants total. As we covered in our last uh, session, this is an open tray impression. Uh, the copings were individually customized um, per uh, implant site. And not only that, but we used a material called a twist plate strengthener um, by Keystone Industries. There's the 800 number in case you need to find out about that. Uh, and also the website is www.keystoneind.com. Uh, that's the actual number. And you get a package of 10. Uh, they look like this individually. And you can bend them to fit. They're very rigid. They're braided. That's why I like them. And you can... Uh, used them once, you know, with one case. I've never reused them. Um, but they they bend well and they don't have a, a true memory. So you bend them and they stay. So we use them to join these analogs together. And in the previous video, we showed you what we did in the mouth as well. We wanted to loot the impression copings together in the mouth prior to taking the open tray impression we did. So this if we need to, we'll join these together and do a second pour, but I don't want to uh, delay any further. I want to go ahead and, and show you the laboratory and diagnostic wax up as well as model pouring and, and model fabrication. So let me get rid of this, put this aside in a safe place. And I'm going to bring out now the wax up. Now I've already mounted this case which was edentulous now in the posterior. And I used a um, um, ion crowns or plastic hollow crowns that you can grind and, ho and further hollow the occlusion so that you can bring also the cusp tips down to where they could align um, better in the posterior. Now, Frank's case has a somewhat of a malocclusion and the lower uh, dentition are all crown teeth. Um, yes, it would have been nice to to re uh, redo the lower, but uh, it may have been including here, especially on the left side, it might have included uh, root canal therapy. So we avoided that um, and went with our, our occlusion that we have. So the um, upper, um, I went ahead and made a duplicate cast and then an omnivac. So here's the dupe. And then we made an, a clear Omnivac suck down to this. And also we punched holes in areas where the um, access holes would be, in this case, predicting the access holes from the wax up. Um, upper right side looks somewhat better uh, than the upper left side. Left side looks like they're all canted to the distal. And if you look from the side, you're going to see also where the implants go through more toward the distal on the upper left side. Let me just push that down and you could see it more clearly. So that poses a problem, maybe not so much on this molar, but it looks like we're going to need to A, either make the first bicuspid wider, bringing the entire occlusion back, or go with some type of uh, uh, you know, custom abutments and maybe a cement too, uh, to, de to be determined. I'm going to run this by 
our lab and also the Nobel people and see what we need to do with it. The embrasures looks like they're almost right in the in the way of the um, you know of the implants themselves or vice versa. The implants are in the, in the middle of the embrasures, just just uh, mesial to the embrasures. So right, uh, patient's left side is is an issue. Now the the patient's right side better scenario somewhat, although uh, looks like. 3, 4 look good, 5 looks a little bit to the distal, and then it obviously a little bit distal on number 6, which we will have to do a custom abutment and a cement on, on that one. So, you know, I'm trying to do this case uh, with as many screw retain crowns as I can individually, but it looks like we're going to be running into a problem on this side. Um, another thought came to my mind is uh, doing a substructure and then a screw-on superstructure to that. Uh, that's uh, that's one of my options, and and I'm going to talk to my lab about that. Uh, I have done some dog-legged kind of a, a structure in the past on some lowers, um, you know, where the crowns are kind of morphed to the mesial. Uh, difficult to do. I have done them, and I have recorded that case, and it is on YouTube. Um, I believe it's um, Rose Marie's case. Rose Marie's case. You'll see it's a very difficult lower um, Nobel case that I've done in the past. So we'll see. We'll see where we go with this case. And I just wanted to, you know, kind of get this case and steps out to you so that you can see how it develops and if we can succeed with going with screw retained versus uh, custom abutment and cement retained. Uh, that's it from here. Um, maybe I'll give you one more tip here before I go. Um, we talked about using the pillbox and uh, went ahead and brought this to our, uh, your attention in the past but uh, Great little item, you know, it has individual locks, has a locking mechanism so you can keep, you know, your implants together, um, healing abutments, pressure copings, try-in abutments, um, you know, so everything stays. You can number them teeth. I number them one through seven, and I start on the upper right side, and I work my way over to the upper left side. So there's seven implants with this case. Um, there's some, you know, individual um these were peak abutments, I believe, that I used to make an impression, excuse me, a bite registration abutment. So that would go in the model, not only in the model, but it was already in the mouth to take the bite registration. And I've covered that technique with Ken's case in the past. That's another implant case that we've done. So you can look at that. Um, I may follow this video with another segment on how to mount the case. So let me do that. I'll close it up and uh, we'll come back to you uh, with the uh, mounting of this case and it'll be uh, also accompanied with a custom guide table as well. This is Dr. Jerry Cuomo in my office. Uh, have a good day out there and we'll get back to you on the next segment with uh, Frank's case. Take care.